brothers and sisters in Christ. Monsignor Vachon, Bishop of Ottawa from 1940 to 1953, had a great devotion to our Blessed Mother Mary. Many of the parishes in our diocese were given various titles of Our Lady during his time. I'm not sure if every parish or result of the to our Blessed Mother, but probably most of them. And this project that I'm carrying today is one of his. It has the Blessed Mother with the child Jesus in the little circle at the top, pointing out the strength of our church, which is devoted to our Blessed Mother Mary, these absolute prophets is named after the Immaculate Conception, and our cathedral, of course, is also named after Don, our Lady's Church. I uh, see that there's a great bit of, bit of Marian devotion even in this church. Here we have our Lady the Rosa here, our Lady the Rosa of Help, our Lady who's crowned, I think, over there. Thank you. Is that right? Malta. That's a very pretty from Malta. Malta, okay. Uh, the assumption. It must be Maltese, I'm At any rate, our Lady is very close to us. We have our Lady the Rosa here and our Lady the up at the top, so. Uh, basically has a great chance to be aware of Blessed Mother Mary and what she means for us. I've just come back from 10 days in Ethiopia, my first chance to visit Africa. I had to do it in their winter time, so during this weather, it's cold and rainy in that side about this time of year, they try to all escape. One of the priests asked me if you come over next June, July, and August to escape the winter. Uh, we had a wonderful opportunity to develop some peace to go and see the, the uh, ways in which the money that we raised for the Sahel, uh, Maori, and uh, other areas in that, other countries in that area, and in Ethiopia are being used uh, to renew agricultural places that were devastated by the drought and try to introduce new ways of farming, new crops that would bear twice as much corn in half the time. Very, very productive thing. Developed in Ethiopia by Ethiopian agronomists. Uh, the, the digging of wells so that women wouldn't have to walk two hours each way to get water for their family and be tempted to take water that was not very sanitary because of illnesses and so on. So wonderful things are being done there. And the Christian community, the Catholic community there is very tiny. Uh, the Christian part of Ethiopia is about 64% Christian. 63 of those percent are Ethiopian Orthodox, and 1%, even less than 1%, are Roman Catholics. The Catholics of the Gis tradition that are in the union with Rome. But they have a tremendous outreach. There are 86 million people in Ethiopia, and the small Catholic community serves and helps about 15 million of them. So we are serving uh, above our weight, punching above our weight in terms of helping people. All because of the international support of Caritas International, Welcome to Peace, Calcoy from, from England, or Calcutta, from Ireland, from Scotland, and so on. We have a wonderful opportunity to pray with the Ethiopians in their right. It's a very long mass, over two hours. A beautiful singing and beautiful reverence and great devotion. I was very encouraged by that time with them and sharing them with them. And their calendar is a little bit behind ours. Today is the 16th of August, 2005, in the Gia's calendar. So they're still preparing to celebrate the Feast of the Assumption of our Blessed Mother next week. And they have a 15-day fast to prepare for that. And the restaurants recognize and such so that we have food that's lined up fasting, not fasting. Uh, and a very interesting sense of devotion to our Blessed Mother Mary. So anticipating our Lady by a day for the preach of the Mary is relatively speaking, part of the pattern of the path. We've come here tonight to honor our Blessed Mother as Queen, thinking, of course, of our friends, the sisters, who take as their special patronage our Blessed Mother as Queen, which is the Mary community. 
If you recall in our cathedral, there's a beautiful image of Christ crowning his blessed mother at the top of the altar, the main altar, with the blessed mother and uh, with uh, Joseph also sharing their honor and glory. The reading that we heard at the beginning tonight is from Isaiah chapter 9. And if it sounds like Christmas, it is because that's the reading we hear Christmas in the past. The people walked in darkness and seen a great light. Those who lived in the land of deep darkness on them, light has shone. Light has shone in the child of the Blessed Mother Mary. The child has been born for us, the Son is given to us. We will be named Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Appreciate the radiant light and hope which Isaiah foresees, we must contrast it with the gloomy darkness that he mentions in the passage just before this reading. In that passage it says that people will turn their faces upward, they will look to the earth, but they will see only distress and darkness, the gloom of anguish, and they will be thrust into thick darkness. This is the extremity of God's forsakenness from which the light of the Prince of Peace rescues his fellow human beings. You might say that only when the human condition is sunk to its utter depths of darkness and despair can one see that God's intervention brings light. And with light comes hope. God's light brings with it joy, but not a passing joy, rather a joy that's experienced, as the prophet says, in the relief and the peace and the sense of accomplishment that falls of wind into the harvest. For what the war weary people feel the cessation of hostilities. Imagine what the people of Syria would have learned or feel if the war there was over, the civil war. Imagine what the people in Egypt would feel if the cessation and the hostility stopped, ceased. That's really what we were asked to imagine. What God wants for his people, wants for us. The spiritual vitality is like that which surfaces in the soul when a burden is lifted from a person's shoulders. What the joy one feels when the rod of the oppressor is trying to shatter. Truly, it is a life that is a whole new social order can be imagined. That's why our development of peace and other social agencies are trying to bring about. There shall be endless peace, and justice, and righteousness, and this time on and forever. And how did this get started? It started obviously in the heart of God. God was looking at our world and imagining things can be better, but only if we intervene. Only the second person of the Trinity is sent into our world to bring about the reconciliation, harmony, and peace. And to, take, and to do that, we require the consent of one person, the Blessed Virgin Mary. We see her in the Gospel, presenting before the angel of the Lord, and Gabriel, her concern, how can this be? I don't know a man, how can I conceive of my womb? Jesus says, the Holy Spirit will overshadow you, and that which will be born of you will be some of the most high. What does Mary say? Mary says, let it be done to me according to your word. Yes. I accept that. And that's the model of each one of us. To bring about the light in the world, to bring about joy, to bring about a sense of peace, is to say yes to God. And we thank the sisters for saying yes to God in our midst. We said yes to God in surrendering family. Aspirations for promotion, advancement, to live a very simple life of poverty, chastity, and obedience. With the same in their very persons, what God has called all of us to do. So tonight, as we thank God for our Blessed Mother Mary, as we thank God for women who are ready to follow in her way and live her life of obedience to God, we pray that we too might say yes to God. We pray that there will be young men in our church, in this parish perhaps, in this assembly tonight, who would say yes to vocation for priesthood. And the other young women would say yes to following God in religious life. We have a great need for vocation to the priesthood and country of life in our church in Ottawa, the church in Canada, particularly in the western countries of the world, so that people may know the plan that God has for each one of us and we may say yes to that. So tonight, and we thank God for blessing Mother Mary. Let us also pray that we too may say yes to God our Father and try to keep ourselves on the straight path.